Hey guys, it's Major Foley here, and I'm sure you heard the news the other day. Age of Mythology is getting a Definitive Edition. It only seems like last year, because it was, I said I was no longer doing Age of Mythology content unless a Definitive Edition came out. Well, I guess I can eat my words. So yeah, the moment that comes out, I'll be streaming it day one, and I will probably be recording a guide in the few weeks after that. But that's for then. This is now. We are up to the final level of the Norman campaign, just as Season 3 has been released, because I've been lazy about this. Uh, so we're up to the Second Battle of Lincoln. The succession of a child king left England vulnerable to revolt. Its protection fell to an aging knight and a female sheriff in 1217. Let's go! When forces loyal to King John undermined Rochester Castle, it spelled doom for the rebels inside. Within days, they had surrendered. But the rebel barons weren't done yet. Their ally, Prince Louis of France, had sent an invasion force to help the barons overthrow King John. Then, in late 1216, the king fell ill with dysentery and died. His son, just nine years old, was crowned King Henry III. It was now up to the young king's regent, the 70-year-old legendary knight William Marshall, to protect the crown. He faced a near impossible challenge. England was crumbling. Rebels were taking town after town. But William Marshall bided his time and prepared to defeat the rebels. Then in May 1217, he got the chance that he'd been waiting for. William discovered that the rebels planned to simultaneously besiege both Dover Castle and Lincoln Castle. With rebel forces split and weakened, William Marshall led his royalist army to Lincoln. The castle on one side of the city was still controlled by royalists, under its formidable constable, Lady Nicola de la Haye. But the streets of the city were under rebel control. On May 20th, 1217, the Royalist Relief Force, led by William Marshall, arrived to retake the rebel-controlled city. The future of England rode on the success of this mission. Rebel barons and their French allies besieged the castle at Lincoln. The King's Knight, William Marshall, was tasked with retaking the city by force. Uh, one thing I can say about Season 3, they didn't do any good campaign changes. This thing's still bugged, as you can see. Anyway, moving on. Troops loyal to the King held the castle at Lincoln, while outside... Rebels controlled the city. Alright, first thing you want to do is train archers here. Until reinforcements arrived. And get the Under network of citadel upgrade and the armor clad upgrade. So let's get that upgrade first. Those two upgrades set. Group up your archers and set up camps. Have them about in like locations like this. We're not gonna be training any infantry just yet. We're gonna send our villagers to chop wood and we're gonna send one villager down to around here. There's a relic here that you can see in the minimap. Well, not the minimap, but the screen. Make sure your archers get onto the wall. And we're going to train... Um, we're not really going to train anything but archers for the moment. As you can see, the armor of these walls helps a lot. So there might be a couple of enemy villages that might attack yours here. Don't worry about it. Uh, a lot of the buildings are locked behind town centers, or the town center is not accessible, so you have to wait, because it's the campaign. So just build a monastery next to the relic, and then send your villager back once he's done. Uh, you might notice that um, some waypoints have now changed um, with the Season 3 patch. 
Um, red outlines now mean that they're going to attack something, which is kind of cool. It's a nice quality of life change. So for now, we're just going to train as much archers as we can. Focus down the battering rams when you see them. Be a good idea. You have fire arrows like you did last time. You want to try to keep these towers around for as long as possible as they provide the network of castles slash citadels buff. And the armor on the wall should be more than enough to help your guys live. So don't... I should say... Make sure you have enough gold to train a monk. So that's why we, I waited till the monastery is up and started training before I got the men at arms. Because this will provide us with passive gold generation, which is very nice to have. So keep training archers from here and train men at arms from the barracks. You can slowly keep these things repaired as well. It's a nice idea, especially when you've got no combat. Excuse me. Just make sure that you can focus down the right targets. So yeah. We don't want to send our men at arms out. We want to keep them very healthy for when we start taking back the city. Uh, the city will not fall under our control. Um, so we only have to destroy six specific buildings. And if we want, we can actually use the enemy's market to our advantage. By sending our own traders to it. So we've got four idlers, they've used all the wood. And it looks like our um, other villager died when he was repairing the wall, which kind of sucks. Alright, so now for Monk, we're going to put it in to the monastery. So now we start generating passive gold. Keep training those archers. So that gold, uh, that relic will provide us with 100 gold a minute, within ticks of 16. So you'll see a tick come up in a moment. There you go. Send the monk over, so you help repair, um, heal your units. It is a shame that we lost the villager for him to repair, but it's not the worst thing. We'll be able to train more soon enough anyway. And we can get a second town center immediately as well. The level takes around 25 minutes. If you're quick enough, you can probably get it before then too. And you can see we're about to be pop capped. Ooh, those spring olds, they're gonna kill one of their archers. Ooh, there he goes. Now, if you see Maganels, try to focus them down when they come out. Now, we've essentially chopped most of the wood here, and really, we don't have to be around here for long, so we're just going to send our villagers to where the town is, so we can take it back faster. We don't have to wait for the reinforcements to reach the town. Uh, but the reinforcements have to have arrived on the battlefield for you to take over the, uh, the town, so... You have 46 archers and 19 men-at-arms, it's plenty. And then, yeah. So when we, when it's our time to attack, we're going to attack in a clockwise direction from the top and then down to here. And we'll have to destroy six buildings, mostly military ones. So once the Maganel's in range, focus it down. If they have a lot of archers, they will take down like one unit here or there. It's not too much of a concern. You'll have, you'll have plenty to replace with. So that tower is going to go down. But take out the Meganel and the uh, Springholds first. Yeah, that tower is going to go, but it not, doesn't matter. So they're going to just go all the way back. Just keep them here. They'll be idle for a bit, but it won't matter too much. Ten seconds, and our reinforcements arrive. 
chance. And see that defended Uta every chance. Alright, cool. So, there we go. Now we'll take control of this town because they were right there. Build a second town center immediately. Because this will help a lot. And start training villagers. Just remember to keep taking out the battering rams so they don't destroy the walls. Yep. And just send your villagers to uh, chop wood in the meantime. Now there are a couple of boars you can take if you want. It's not going to be necessary. We want to start building farms because we're going to want to take advantage of enclosures when we advance to the next stage. So once your knights arrive, we're going to attack. We're actually going to keep these longbowmen on this wall just so the battering ram doesn't break through the wall because they will send another one. Now, William Marshall's ability is charge, which increases knight's attack damage and movement speed for 15 seconds, and we'll be using that to initiate the attack, along with the men-at-arms. I'm going to use these archers to help as well. Because now they've got crosswomen too, we have to be careful for men-at-arms. So charge in with your knights, which, yeah, of course, the, uh, they'll do good against knights as well, but... We're going to have our archers focus them down. Take out the Maganels when you see them as well. Because they're going to do that to your archers. So just pull them back if they get hit. And use the priest as well as the campfire to heal. And you can take care of the rest. They can also still defend while they're in this location. So it's not the worst. So after that, just take out the military buildings and collect the resources. So you can start training more. Just keep training, keep training. And we're going to keep training villagers, non-stop. If you've got more idlers, just um, put them on farms, build another mill, repeat. You don't, now, they don't have to be on mills for the enclosure upgrade. It's just recommended because you'll get a lot more food. Alright, so once that's done, let's go take out some more military buildings, which is over here. Send the knights to go deal with the Maganel again. Or if they get close enough to your archers, you can just use them again. There we go. Alright, so now that we've defended this wall for long enough, and there should be another battering ram, we can bring out the rest of our archers. Alright, destroy the next military buildings, because Siege is very powerful in this game. <laughs> Keep training, keep training. Send some on gold because we're going to need gold to advance to the next stage, obviously. The king's men tore through the rebel fortifications. Keep going. Now, eventually, there will be French that will attack your wall, so you will want some on this wall here. Grab the resources. Yep, there you go. Like I said. Proceed to destroy the last buildings. From the, rebels, French allies. the French attacking is not too bad. Just make sure you take out the enemy here. And you'll be fine. If you are afraid, just send a few archers to the side. And you'll be good. But that tower will help and your guys will still have archers on the wall that you can use to help as well. Don't forget to keep collecting the resources nearby. So you can train more as needed. It's a good jump in resources, so it's worth grabbing. And then just proceed to destroy the rest of the buildings. Ah, uh, we destroyed the market, so we can't use it for trade, but we're never, we don't really need it with the amount of gold we can collect later. There's enclosures and a lot of large gold mines. If you run out of gold before going over here, there is a gold mine and stone mine above here. It's guarded by a tower and some units. Alright, clean up the army, and then move your army down here. Where the monastery is. The king's army raised the last of the rebels' military buildings, but the French siege continued. All right. So if the king's men hoped to lift the French siege, they would need to destroy the enemy forts on the outskirts of. So from here, we're going to focus on advancing as quickly as we can. So we're going to build another mill and start getting um the food required. We have the gold. We need the food now. You can clean out the houses if you wish. Send your army starting to go towards the French camps. Where the forts are. 
and start cleaning out the area. And you can have your Monk heal your units while you wait. Now you should have a market back at base 2, so if you want, sell resources, buy resources, just get enough to advance to the next stage. Alright, so we're going to go with the Windguard Palace, and we're going to send 8 of our villagers to go build it, and we're going to build it close to here, so it's closer to the front. Because we're going to want that tribute, like the massive army that comes out of it at a good discount, because it'll also provide us with trebuchets that are required. It'll help us a lot in our siege. We're going to get a few more villagers to finish up the farms here. Of course, we're getting a few more on gold. And then eventually, once the Windguard Palace is done here, we're going to build a forward base. So yeah, there will be no more enemies attacking us from here, so we don't have to worry about it. Alright, so we just ran into an attack. See the red circles with the new waypointing. Alright, right, so that should be enough on... Uh, no, we'll get a bit more on gold because we're going to be spending a lot on upgrades. So, keep that from happening. I'm going to build a closer lumber camp again. Yeah, but yeah, the two town set of production helps a lot here. I'm going to send a couple of villagers to start building barracks and archery ranges. As opposed to the wind guard. Because of diminishing returns. And we can also get a blacksmith and arsenal, so we can upgrade our units as well. Did I build two blacksmiths? No, cool. Just want to make sure I built the right ones. And you'll always want an army being produced out of the Windguard Palace at all times. Alright, 14 on gold should be enough because we're going to be uh, rushing the enclosures upgrade. So our farms will start producing gold as well. So we have enough to get it now. And we also want to get the arrow volley upgrade. And shattering projectiles is not a bad upgrade to get since we'll also be training trebuchets. So now we're going to send our guys back onto the farm. And we want to get our upgrades to elite as well. Getting precision crossbreeding is nice. Um, so the enclosures uh, upgrade is actually more powerful in multiplayer because the gold instead of one every eight seconds, it's like every three and a half. So it's a lot better in multiplayer at the moment. But um, yeah, so I'm going to set up another mill. Probably right here. And then um, as you can see, we're going to start waypointing them up there. Going to start training more units. Uh, I would also get a Siege Workshop just so you can also build trebuchets by themselves. Because the faster we get some trebuchets, the uh, faster we can end the level. Because we just have to destroy the buildings in the area. You can also get Maganels for anti-area if you want, but shatter, Shattering Projectiles can help with that. It turns the trebuchets into Maganels at the cost of them being a little slower, obviously, and longer, but they are longer range. And just keep going. Keep going with the upgrades. I would get the cupellation upgrade for your gold because we are spending a lot of gold here. And we're going to keep the couple of villages here as well, just because um we want to keep advancing our forward bases. So we're going to keep training. And now, even with one trebuchet, we're just going to start hitting them. Break open a wall, because you can see there's a few Maganels there. They will start sending units out if you get too close, so... But yeah, keep training units. Alright, so now the enclosures is done, you can see the gold popping up every few seconds. 
Alright, cool. More farms. We're also gonna get the, uh... Ranged upgrade first, for the ranged damage upgrade, and then we'll get the ranged armor upgrade next. Alright, so now we've got our open hole. We can just start slowly destroying the buildings. That's gonna burn by itself. Uh, so this is an attack that's supposed to come for your wall, but we're in the way, obviously. So we're gonna try to hit the um, Maganels so they die quickly. By dealing with the Maganels, we won't have to worry about the area damage. Now, obviously, if your hero goes down, you can always revive him by just clicking on him. And he'll come back with a decent amount of health, too, so... Alright, so we, with our trebuchets, we killed the uh, Maganel. I activate Arrow Volley any time it's off cooldown. And we're going to get the upgrades from these barracks back here. So we're going to upgrade our Elite Men at Arms and Elite Archers. This way, we can still train from the front. And just, you just gotta get in there and destroy every building that you can. So our army's gonna be full of archers because they're hiding behind the back and everything else is tanking the damage. And you, remember, you'll get spearmen mixed in with the army too from the Wingard Palace, so don't be afraid to just send them in. And also don't forget that the siege can be a bit janky, so you have to move them a little closer to make sure they are in range before they fire. I'm going to keep activating Arrow Volley and keep pushing forward. What? Keep them going. And just waypoint into there. Alright. Now we'll get the range defense upgrade. That blacksmith never finished, which is weird. So let's fix that. We'll get our leader back up. And once these buildings are done, we're just going to go for the second camp. So we want to train more men at arms because we want more melee right now. And we're going to start sending them over to the bridge now. Because we've got more than enough to deal with this fort. Alright, so that's one fort taken care of. Now you can get biology, but we aren't training cavalry much. They're only coming from the Wingard Palace, so it's not strictly necessary. Now with these two villages that we have up here, and we're going to get a few more that are on farms. Just to help the production. Clean out this area. Of course, they had started attacking a house that was close by. But yeah, the men at arms, are, they won't take any damage from the uh, French archers, really. So, just keep waypointing them forward. Get more trebuchets. And we're going to start building our forward bases here. And we're going to start attacking the next one. Once your waypoints are set up. We've got 76 archers. We've got loads. Alright, so start pushing forward. As you can see, we are pop capped. They've used all the gold, but we now have access to gold mines up here. And over there, so we've got plenty to activate your arrow volleys when you can. Take them out, start taking out the towers with your trebuchets. Remember, if your leader goes down, just revive him again when you get a chance. Uh, pressing the button makes it easy to target him, so do that if you need to. And then just get in there and take out the springholds. And all you gotta do is get in there, take out the army. Remember, there is gonna be a bunch of Maganels, so shoot them down. 
You can use formations to uh, like stagger your units so they take less. But I find it's just easier to get in there with the mass of archers and shoot them down. Because you've got so many archers you can one-shot them at this point. So yeah, fairly easy. That's what happens when you just spam and your archers are the ones staying alive and your men-at-arms are dying by the thousands. <laughs> so yeah, just keep waypointing your units up and start taking everything out. Gonna move the trebuchets in to start taking things out from the back. Burn the military building so it doesn't train any more units. I think the villagers get behind there. Oh, I must have selected. Oh, they must be the other ones I selected by mistake. Doesn't matter. We've already nearly finished this. So just make sure all the buildings are destroyed and you'll win. The attack speed these longbows get when you activate it is amazing. That's it. We did it by 23 minutes. Not a bad time after all. And that's it for the Norman campaign. We're done. William Marshall and Nicola de la Haye had saved the city. And with it... The kingdom. So there should be one last cutscene if we collect, uh, click the continue button because it's the last level. So here we go. William Marshall's success in retaking Lincoln was an overwhelming victory for the royalists. The rebel barons had been defeated, and their French allies driven out of England altogether. <laughs> William Marshall now focused on creating a stable kingdom for the young King Henry III. To maintain the backing of the rebels, in 1217, a royal seal of approval was given to a reissued Magna Carta, limiting the power of the monarchy. Many barons held lands in both England and Normandy. But now they faced a choice. On which side of the channel would they make their home? Many chose England. The cross-channel kingdom was over, establishing a clear English identity. But the impact of the Normans on England's evolution is still felt today. Almost a thousand years later, the surviving Norman castles and cathedrals still dominate the landscape. In the midst of the modern city, William the Conqueror's fortress, the Tower of London, remains a powerful reminder of their legacy. But it's the unseen influence of the Normans that endures. The Norman invasion changed the English language and establish the foundations of modern parliament and governance. And it's all because one man, William the Conqueror, claimed the English crown that he believed by rights was his. The Normans conquered a country and changed the course of England forever. the end of the Norman conquest. Alright, so that's it for this campaign, guys. The next campaign is the French one, the 100 Years War. So that should be a fun one. Uh, I also remember reading back, I think, a season or two ago that they made the first level and the last level uh, 
easier. Um, the last level they 100% made easier, I'm pretty sure of that. Um, too bad I didn't record it back in its uh, hardened state, because that was actually a lot of fun to beat it as a challenge. But it's what it's done is done now, so I can't complain about that. So, from here on, we'll be doing the French campaign, then we'll be doing the Mongol Empire, and then finally the rise of Moscow, because that was the old order, and I plan on keeping it that way. So guys, join me next time for the combat of the 30. Catch you guys later.